This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1523, The Art of Companionship, part one, by Silon George of spirituallivingforbusypeople.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Optimal Relationships Daily. My name is Greg Audino. I'm your host and narrator. And if you're new here, this is the show on which I read to you from some of the best blog posts and articles around that are centered on relationships and relationship building. I'm here with you every single day, narrating and offering my own commentary as well. And today, I'm bringing a post from Silon George to you. We haven't heard from him in a bit, so it's a pleasure to share his work again. And this post is longer, so I'm going to read part one today and then finish up in tomorrow's episode. There's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in and optimize your life. The Art of Companionship, Part 1 by Silon George of SpiritualLivingForBusyPeople.com Quote, Wherever you have friends, that's your country, and wherever you receive love, that's your home. End quote. By Dalai Lama. I've always been introverted and shy. Despite this, I have not considered myself a loner. I've developed a few good friendships. I'm able to interact socially and find people interesting. I love the process of getting to know people and getting to be known. But, I have been lonely, especially as life moved from college to work, marriage, and family. Friendships fell away. Life became more serious and hard. I felt like no one understood me or could understand me even if they wanted to. I felt like sharing the deepest parts of my struggle would reveal me as a fraud or worse. The saddest part? This was true even of my closest relationships, including my wife. The first few years of our marriage were very good. However, some recent significant bumps in the road have forced us to take a hard look at our relationship. We discovered that, even though things were mostly good, we weren't each other's best friend. We weren't companions on the journey of life. We were both lonely, maybe even loners. It didn't help that she's an introvert, too. Artificial Companions Though none of us want to admit it, we are starving for companionship but it's too vulnerable to seek others out because of the possibility of being rejected. So instead, we turn to our technology. Our technology have become our constant companions, to the absolute joy of big tech. We spend every waking hour with them. We talk to them. We sleep with them. Our technology knows more about us than we know about ourselves. We even have chatbots that mimic human interaction online. We turn to celebrities as companions, too. We keep track of every detail of their lives on social media. We know them better than we know the members of our households. We turn to our pets for companionship. We bask in their unconditional love and acceptance. And there is an upside to all of these relationships. We get to avoid the specter of rejection altogether. But the downside is that we deny ourselves the chance to engage in meaningful relationships with other people. We're caught between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. We yearn for the deep connections only other people can bring, yet we actively avoid the potential burden brought on by those same relationships. We like our freedom. We like being able to make decisions and pursue life unfettered by the opinions or influence of others. Our individuality and freedom are sacred, period. And if the price to pay is being a little lonely, so be it. Here's the problem. We are more anxious and depressed than ever before. We are more self-absorbed than ever. As a result, we are more unhappy than ever. We don't know how to have civil conversations with each other. We're less neighborly. We've lost the wisdom of our elders and now turn to Google for answers. We overeat and overdrink to cope, and it's killing us. We're stressed and exhausted, and suicide has become a leading cause of death in the United States. Too many of us have decided to sit on the sidelines of life where it's safe, but we're discovering that the lonely fringes are far more dangerous than we realized. As hard as it can be to be close to other humans, we need each other. We need to find our way back to each other. Companions for the Journey So, after years of marriage to my wife, after a number of twists and turns, we're finding our way back to each other. We're much better friends, our intimacy has grown, we're more vulnerable with each other. We're learning the art of companionship. We still have a ways to go, taking note of the traits that make for good companions along the way. Here's what I've noted so far. Number one, companions open up to each other. For most of us, our days are filled with surface level small talk. The often perfunctory greeting, how are you, is often met with a quick, I'm fine, thanks. 
This can be true even among intimate friends or romantic partners. We all know what it's like to be dismissed or shamed after sharing something deeply personal. It only takes one experience of this before we're erecting impenetrable walls between each other. It hurts that much. But walls are deadly for would-be companions. They may protect you from being hurt in the short term, but they'll also deprive you of the nourishment of deep emotional connection in the long run. Our desire for connection is not optional. It's a real need. Open up to each other with compassion, patience, and non-judgment. Share your joys, your sorrows, and your longings. Allow your companion to see you as you are, not as you present yourself on social media. If they're still around after you've done that, you've found a true companion indeed. Number two, companions laugh with each other. They say laughter is the best medicine, but if you look around, few of us are laughing. We walk around stone-faced. Our faces and our bodies are bearing witness to the heavy loads we're carrying. When we laugh, we give ourselves permission to put down the load for a while. Companions learn to do this together. They laugh freely and often. They bring out laughter in each other. The two people who best embody companionship, in my mind, are His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. In The Book of Joy, their friendship and mutual affection for one another shine for all to see. Not only are they joyful, they're downright mischievous with each other, constantly poking fun at one another and laughing at themselves. Who are the companions in your life that make you laugh? Treasure them for the gift they are. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Art of Companionship by Silon George of SpiritualLivingForBusyPeople.com Okay, and Silon off to a great start here today. Surely a lot more to get through in the remainder of this post tomorrow, but he left us with an interesting question at the halfway point, didn't he? Who are the companions in our lives that make us laugh? And then inviting us to treasure them for the gift that they are. Well, before we go, I want to offer a challenge to you. A challenge made in the same vein. For the people in your life who you've lost that sense of laughter with, I challenge you to see them for the gifts that they are anyway. Those who you once loved or those you feel a bit detached from now, like you can't relate to them as much as you used to, what beauty do they bring to your life? And how can you acknowledge this beauty and keep it top of mind so that the laughter and effortless joy in these relationships might be reignited? Oftentimes, our feelings of loneliness can be bred from losing sight of the gifts people give us that are right under our noses, gifts that we might take for granted or have a hard time seeing just how they help us. So take some time today to acknowledge what these people do and can bring to your life and how they impact the world in their own special way. As I said, there's a lot more to come tomorrow though, folks. So I'm going to leave it there for today. Have a great rest of your day. Make sure to come back for part two and I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.